TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. You can come join us if you want. If not, that's cool. Just leave a like. Comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. I just woke up. I'm talking two minutes ago. But I'm jumping right into Documentary Monday. It's Gangland Turf War London 2006. This is part two. Started this last Documentary Monday. Um, I did it in two parts. I said I was going to do the final part in one take so let's just get into it gang culture and the violence that surrounds it is gripping the streets of london Simple. and the young people caught up in it are the collateral damage in this dangerous world the gang's voices are always stronger because that's what washes your brain out. During the course of filming, contributors to this series have been sent to jail for knife possession, shot, and stabbed to death. This isn't the normal life of a teenager. I'm fretting about my grandkids. Sound like I don't want to go on there. Yeah. Simple. This is incriminating. I do not want to get that phone call. In the same period, 90 teenagers were stabbed in the capital. 17 of them lost their lives as a result. I'm 16 and I've seen six people get stabbed and killed. And the resulting death and loss is destroying families. They did come to kill my son. Oh, Jesus. He's not coming back. The sway of gang culture is having a dangerous and devastating effect on the young and impressionable. All it takes is that one wrong move for you to be dragged in into a whole new world that you don't want to be involved in. And with more and more vulnerable young people falling into the web of this violent culture. I could die any day now. Where is the system? You got to stop these gangs. Growing up in Britain has never been more dangerous. Yeah, now you got the flicky. Fam, I will match work with that flicky, you know. Of course you watched it in 016. I wasn't even... Where was I in 2016? I was nothing... Not around here. <laughs> On September 3rd, 2015, Shaquan Fearon was tragically stabbed to death in Brockley, South London, hey. six weeks before his 18th birthday. That'd be the tragic part, man. It's not even making it to see legal adulthood nowadays. This is 2016, so it's even crazier now. No more premature death. Amen. No more early death. Shaquan was not in a gang and had a bright future ahead of him. But the all-pervasive gang culture that has young people carrying and using knives made him yet another young victim of the lifestyle. At the funeral, it's like I was literally speaking to him and he was just speaking to me. One day we'll all meet you with laughter, with joy. When it was going on, he's saying to me, Mom, this is it. Man, I don't even go to funerals, bro. This should be so tragic. Man, that's, that's one of the saddest things to see right here. No cap. This is one of the saddest things to see. Let go. I'm going. <laughs> Saying to me, Mom, let go. It's like he was saying, Let it go. I'm gone. <laughs> My son. My son. <laughs> That's heartbreaking. Shapan, rest in peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good child. From you to last a good child. It's really hard. Really, really hard. This part of Southeast London is particularly afflicted by young street gangs with 16 of them said to be active across the borough of Lewisham. 
Coach Kwan was on his way to this youth club when he was killed. Who the fool? Like, so he was doing some real, like he was going to, he was just doing another youth club, after school program. Seeing someone that like, you always see, like, and you don't see no more, it's just weird. Shaquan's old school friend Cairo was with him minutes before he was killed. His decision to head to a music studio instead of the local youth club with Shaquan still troubles him. Yeah, around there is where he died, in it? Like, this is where they had the little fight and brawl out, and this is where he got stabbed. Stabbed for no reason. Shaquan's mother, Sharon, works just a few hundred meters away. She rushed over to his side as he lay dying. It was so bad. It wasn't a nice thing to stop. But he wasn't going to the youth club, okay. He was going to the music... Oh, no, he was going to the youth club and his boy was going to the music studio. I'm on the floor with so much blood. When I seen his eyes going over, that's when I start to scream. I know my son here when I cried out. That cry will never go in vain. Oh, so his mom seen it. accused of murdering Shaquan, who were 15 and 16 years old at the time, were known locally for carrying knives. Even Cairo had a run-in with them. I had my own little problems with them, innit? I had my own little madnesses I've had with them. It would have been different if, like, I never went to studio that day. If I came up there, it probably wouldn't have happened, didn't it? Because I would obviously told the youths, no, that can't run, innit? Or I don't know, it could have been me getting stabbed. I don't know, man. In 2000. It's terrible because you're going to always think like that, especially if that's your homie. Like, and you was with him right before, and then it, like, separate ways y'all went, and then you're going to think like that for the rest of your life, huh? 15, there were 81 incidents of knife crime involving young people in the bar of Lewisham alone. Gang He's a rapper? Was having a very real and increasingly dangerous effect on the community. Well, I'm 16 and I've seen six people get stabbed and killed. Damn. I don't know how to feel sometimes, like, it's too normal. I've lived it for my whole life, this dirt is all I've seen since I've grown up. You know, I could have just been living a normal life of a teenager. But then again, this is normal life of a teenager. To gain further insight into this culture and its harsh realities, a current London gang member shared with us why he believes in the need to carry a knife. I love my knife. It's like that. Because if I'm not... I said, I love my knife. I'm going to get married to it and gay. Back in my heart now, then. I could get my knife on they have their knife on them, I get fucked up. I've seen death coming towards me, and I've been smart about it. I've moved away from the car. And they say you've only got one life, so that's me using that wisely. If you're on these road, then obviously you can't be scared. People that are beefing, if you're scared when they come towards you, then what are you going to do? You're just going to be sitting there fired. So you're getting fucked up and knocked down. But these roads are mad. It's been months since Shaquan Firon was murdered, and his mother Sharon still has her own memorial to him in his room. She wants to keep his presence close to her at all times. So this is Shaquan room. Man, it's a hard thing to say, man, but like... Everybody gonna grieve their own way, I guess. But like holding on to a memorial inside your house. I don't want to say the wrong thing, but like holding on to a memorial inside of your house. Like you're never going to get over it. Like, I mean, of course, you're never going to get over it. Of course, as a parent, you'll never get over it. But like, I don't know. Hey, y'all see anything new in the chat over there?
Like y'all see any new buttons around y'all screen? Y'all see a new subscribe button? Y'all see anything new that y'all can press? It's a shock. Like a room. So this is my temple. This is where I come and pray. It just surprised me, myself, to know that my son is gone. And I'm standing here, think my son is coming back. This is and part I two, I've seen part back. one. So I'm only eight minutes into this. Oh, Jesus. See what I'm saying? Every Why? time you walk into there, you're gonna feel that. Just happened just like that. Oh, so you do see new stuff on there, okay. Knife crime is becoming normalized and a gateway for young people to enter into gangs, ruining lives across the capital. With teenagers. Yeah, I'm gonna start having, um, so I just figured some, oh man, I can't do it. Right. I'll tell y'all in a minute. Groups this responsible for an estimated 130,000 knife attacks in London over the past five years. These street gangs are spreading fear in their communities. When you see the parents crying for their son because their son's dead, you sit down and think about, if I die, look at my mom, I'll be making my mom cry like this. It's like, I'm... I'm because I've been in so many situations where I've nearly got stabbed and like my mom's you see it? She, like she's scared because it keeps on getting to a point as she said the next time it happens she, she just knows I'm gonna get stabbed and something bad's gonna happen. Mom, you're just talking and fighting, fighting, fighting. Cairo lives with his mother Shireen and at 16 years old has seen six of his friends stabbed and killed. I've always thought about a normal life of a 16 year old but I've never seen it because most of all of my friends live the same life as me. This is normal for us. I've grown up knowing like my life is to deal with what I have to deal with. Last game, girl trying to rinse me. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I said, can you call me Wimpy? Okay, I hear the Tion Wayne flow. Tion Wayne touched the generation and now they all wanted to be him. I see it. Cairo knows a further nine people who have survived stabbings. Gang culture and the resulting knife crime has him and his friends fearing for their lives. He makes up. Now I do have a question though. Do y'all see a sub button? Do y'all see on y'all side? Do y'all see a subscribe button? Person not want to be outside no more. Don't want to do stuff anymore. Like places I go, it could be my house or I'll be in my girl's house. You know, you just have those little places where. You go to keep yourself out of certain places so there's more but less a chance of you getting stabbed or killed. It's even like on your way going to studio, you could have something happen. On your way going to my girl's house, there's something happen. And there's areas where they can't go. What do you mean you can't go there? Nah, not going there, it's all right. They don't want to go there. Hmm. Maybe there's people there that don't like them because of the area they come from. So there's certain areas, no, he won't go to. Shireen is aware of how difficult it is for her son, Crazy. but struggles to come to terms with just how commonplace a violent death has become for his generation. I'll figure it out. How much people do we know that's died? Yeah, there was those Neef, there's Nathan, there's Shaq, there's Muhammad, and Jamal that died. I'm trying to remember, there's a couple more people that I know. Yeah. See, that's the sad part. When you get so many people you know around you that died, you can't even remember them all. That's tough. That's way too much. No, not in my lifetime. I've been of that age and people just dropping dead around me. You like you have to wonder who's gonna die next. You have to look at each other and say you're wrong, man. Doesn't matter if you're nice or not these days. Just everybody just trying to. If any time there's a oh, fight, okay. no one's there nice to just okay. use their hand. Everybody wants to always do the coward thing. No, no, but it's because you know that someone else is gonna have it. It's like you have to. What's it say when you click it? You can't say yes or no to you. It's like you have to be about that life. Or like, don't go through with it. But let me, what does it say? Just tell you're me. You're just going to get bullied. Mom. Move, man, and don't. Stop, 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 stop. Stop, But Shireen is also aware that given the increasing danger on the streets, young people are taking drastic measures to protect themselves. 
open up naive to what's going on out there. I know what these boys do. I just, I know. I'm a person, no, I check my knives with my jaw. Like, some people don't. If you ask them, they don't know um, how many knives or what's gone missing. I know what's missing. Ask Cairo. If I go in the jaw, see something missing, I'm calling his name with the knife. Shireen is trying desperately to keep Cairo away from gangs and knives. I don't know. I just act like I'm the detective in my house. I always just go around looking, searching to me. If I want to, if I feel like something don't feel I did that right, one before. I will go in your room. I will turn it upside down and look for everyone what I need to look for. I know every hole, every corner in my... As a parent, man, like, you want to give your kid privacy. You want to give them, like, you know, a certain level of respect because they're growing up. But, hey, I feel that. Well, no, no, I fucked up. When I got that intuition, I gotta go check it out, man. I got to. Because I know where we live, I know what's been happening, I gotta check it out, man. But see, I'm a different type of nigga. Like, you feel me? Like, like I feel like... Shit, if you, you gotta protect yourself out here. Hey, I want you to come home. I rather, Hey, as a parent, hey, listen, I'm sorry. You two, I don't condone it. But I rather... Hey... You come home. You make it home, goddammit. <laughs> my house where you think you might hide it. I know it. Mothers like Shireen are rare in understanding how street life, gangs and violence work. But she is desperate it does not impact on her son. All it takes is that one wrong decision. That one wrong move. That, that's all it takes for you to be dragged in into a whole new world that you don't, you don't want to be involved in. Or you never thought you'd yeah. be involved in. Nowadays, kids are getting involved because they're becoming someone's younger. Like I could see someone out there and say, "Oh, I'm gonna like you can become, become my younger and do Just my one. around for me," and that's how people are getting involved. So that way, if a man can't get me, he sees my younger, he's gonna stab up my younger. That's a fact. Street life I can't get you. I gotta get what's closest to you. I'm not condoning the YouTube. I'm just saying that's what that's what. Three months after Shaquan's violent death, Sharon finally faced the teenagers accused of murdering her son. It's a hard thing to do. You see, you see both of them? Yeah. How did they look? Them come out like really cocky. It's like they was laughing. It's like they, they, they come in like they, they're a bully. You could see. That should have rubbed me the wrong way. I had to go, man, listen. You could see it on them, they are a troublemaker. I really feel like I didn't want to act, just look in their face and no, ask them sir. why, mm. what for, why, when I look at them to see these two boys, yeah, two child, when I look at them properly, as a mom, if I feel <coughs> so bad to know that two child charged for murder and just coming out like it's a fun, like it's a joke. Goofies. What was their plea though? Not guilty. Both of them? Yeah. Do you know what though? That probably works out better because they'll both get murdered and attempted murder. Then. If mm -hmm. one of them said guilty and one of them said not guilty, then the charge was to come both. But now they've both gone guilty, but not guilty. They handed themselves in. They will pay for it. They have to go down. Man, don't get too bent on that, man. The, the, the judicial system is all... It's all friends and the list lawyer's friends with this judge and the lawyer's friends with this one. Like, oh man, no. Prior to Shaquan's death, That's good. having Welcome. already known multiple friends murdered and afraid of being targeted by gangs himself, Cairo made a fateful choice to no longer live like a victim in his own neighborhood. I got caught with a, as they, a knife, but as they say, an article, a, a sharp point article blade. They never caught it on me. Man, they caught it like right down the road, but I knew it was mine and it had my fingerprints on it, so there was no lying. Then I got caught again. Like, rather be rather it on me than not. God damn it! Look at that. <laughs> Two months later, with the same thing. At the age of fourteen, Kyra was given a twelve-month supervision order for carrying. They got stop and frisk there, right? So if they even suspect you of doing anything, they could just stop you and not even care. They just gone. 
Frisky. Being a knife. Quite that's a question. I'm not sure. Is that is that what it is out there? At that moment of in my life I was getting threatened and all of those things there, so I was like, yo, I have to have this my car. Anyone that any moment in my life someone could try to kill me. Cairo was yeah, also I got you. influenced I'm to carry a this. knife as a means of protection by the older boys in the community who were on the fringes of gang life. The way they made it seem like it was the right thing to do, they never ever said to us, like, yo, you shouldn't do this, this is not good, you'll go get arrested, go to jail. They never told us that. They just made it seem like this life was the great and everything was going great for them. With the added fear and pressure of older voices, some vulnerable young people are all too easily inducted into the world of gangs. Some people just want to be part of something and then you just step into it. You don't know where it's going to take you. Like, I stepped into it by accident and it took me places I didn't want to go and then it's a test of character as well. Some people get caught up in the wrong life and then it don't end well for them. If you don't want to see ads, if you do see that subscribe button, just subscribe. I, you don't have to, I don't care, but just if you don't want to see ads. A test of character that former gang member Geordie knows all too well. As a member of the Woolwich Boys Gang, he set up a drugs network selling heroin and crack cocaine in London and Hampshire. Okay. Got a high point. In London and Hampshire. What is that? That looked like a, 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 a if you squeeze, I'm a jam. What the fuck? Hampshire. Before his empire came crashing down, his lifestyle brought him both money and respect. I thought I was going to get 2200 every day until I, I died. Facts. A year after the fall of his drug operation, the police finally brought charges against Geordie in 2015 for intent to supply Class A drugs, though he thought he might still beat the rap. Trying to threaten me that I'm possibly looking at two to four years and all that. I don't want to be hearing that. I'm sure I'm gonna bust it. I'm sure I'm gonna I'm gonna bust it. But yeah, man, it's, it's. I'm not even gonna lie. I watched this last week and he was talking about how he was gonna be this case and then he was like, "Oh, I went in and they was telling me a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't know and da 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 da." But I still think I'm gonna bust it. I I think this nigga's gonna lose his case. He just I just don't believe. Like I think they from like. I don't know. I don't believe it. It's not looking healthy, is it? For almost a decade, Geordie enjoyed the proceeds of his criminal exploits, but the reality of his lifestyle has That's finally okay. caught up with him. I do, I, I do regret it though about shutting to the people uh, selling death because I started realizing that all these people are killing people. <laughs> the stakes have been raised. And Geordie now has to face charges at Crown Court. You have to speed it Some so, people uh, see it and some people don't. Uh, two counts of uh, possession of intent. So, yeah, uh, basically, I'm looking at jail, innit? No matter what I say, it is, I'm looking at jail. That's what it is, innit? Maybe, maybe I do music after all the documentaries that I want to watch have been watched. But that could be for hours now. He now faces the prospect of a serious jail term for his years of gang activity. It's a path that was determined by the choices he made as an impressionable teenager. The voices of the gangs are always stronger than the family's voices because if the gang's voices were not stronger, half of the things that your family were telling you, you would listen. But the gang's voices are always stronger because that's what washes your brain out. I, man, I would say, like, that's true and not true at the same time. You know what I'm saying? You you just, you're destined to not listen to what the fuck your family is saying. <laughs> like, because they've been there all the time. And you're like, ah, whatever, I'm a grown teenager. I'm going to do what the fuck I want to do. Like, let me forge my own path type shit so you're going to listen to whatever else is being told. They wash your brain with lies and this and that, and that's what, that's what it's supposed to do. Cause that's their job. In the borough of Lewisham, Newcross, known as Ghetto to some young locals, 
is one of the toughest neighborhoods in London and has a long history of gang-related problems. She says she wanna flex with some real man. Says she wanna flex with me. She wanna flex. She says she wanna flex with some bad you. Says she wanna flex with me. Today, for many young. That's crazy, bro. I just set it all up yesterday, so I don't. I'm not sure how any of it, any of it works. It says some of you. You see, some of y'all are seeing that button, like the subscribe button. Some of y'all aren't. Just let me know if y'all see it or not. Let me. I'm not sure either. Um, but I'm not, anyway. Young people regrettably caught up in the slipstream of the culture. Music plays a pivotal role in them finding a way to escape its pull. Oh, that's IQ. She said she wanna flex with some road man. She said she wanna flex with me. Music is my life, and that's it's how like it's style. always gonna be. Music is a thing that will calm me down and get me hyped. Music is an emotional thing. It can bring you to certain places. Music can bring Facts. you around the world. When you start hanging with people that are doing good and see them going far places, you're like, oh, man, I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of the change. Cairo is part of a music collective called PHSB, along with one of his best friends, Myron, also known as MDOT. Rochi throws a tantrum. All I'm the girl done. I want to do is just FaceTime. I'm sorry, B, I've got Sam. For Cairo and Myron, this studio has represented a safe haven. I'm sorry, B, I've got Sam. For Cairo and Myron, this studio has represented a safe haven for them and others in an area unfortunately renowned for gang related violence and local beefs. When did I say that? <laughs> I said anybody. You said many. Body, let oh. me solo it. No. Nah, I you flop. Many. All a girl wanna do is just FaceTime. Oh, I'm wow. sorry, B, I got Samsung. Many body. <laughs> <laughs> let me do it again. All right, P, I'm done. Let me do it again. <laughs> so apparently, M dot is gone already. All right, P, you know. <laughs> many body wanna. <it? laughs> no, nah, you're playing, man. Shut up, man. She said I'm too rolled, but I'm happy. As expected from two teenagers, the boys are immersed in the fun of future dreams and their hopes of becoming music stars. I'm sorry, B, I've got Samsung, many body fat. Fam, I keep saying it now because you said that. However, the presence of gangs outside of the four walls of this studio still pose a clear and present danger to the lives of young people like Cairo. Okay. So the people that are dying around you, it's getting too close, so you fear that it's going to be you next. Or someone like one of my best friends, like I don't know, man. I don't know what if I would do if like one of my guys died, like probably flip out, go crazy. I messed up a couple, but like let me go again, let me go again. It's the first day of the murder trial for the two teenagers accused of killing Shaquan Fearon. For the first time, Sharon heard explicit details of how her son Shaquan was killed. Did you see the knife? Yep. But when we were coming out, it was on the desk. Okay, maybe show you up to the front more. So that's how I get to see it and that was horrible when I see the glimpse of the knife and see the knife then. Oh my God, I've looked at the knife and I've cried, I've cried and I've said, why? When I saw that knife and I was telling myself, why is it I'm shaking? My body was just literally shaking and I'm trying to calm myself and I'm just imagining the knife going inside my son. For a child to be carrying a knife like that, Oh. Like what? Let me see. That's like, just like, like a gun. Damn. Oh, you know, respectfully, let's not say that, ma'am. For teenagers in this environment, carrying a knife is deemed essential. But it's governed by a code of silence and secrets. Your kid could be in a house all smiling and joking. When he leaves the, leave the house, it's a completely different thing. 
So, and that's, that's, that's a lot of people. That used to be me when I'm in a house. Like, my mum never knew what I was up to. My dad never knew what I was up to. Like, I was just a perfect child in the house. But as soon as I left, all my mates and that got into like parties at 2, 3 in the morning. All of that. Man, that's, that, that's real talk. Be the best actors when you're in the crib, man. The best. Parents don't know what's going on in that joint. As soon as you step out, you the, you the hardest nigga on earth, bro. Stuff, you're stabbing people there, here, all over the place. Going back home, eating Sunday dinner and all of that. No one knew any different, and it, that's, that's how it is. Diru Oye used to be in a gang. He's now a leading mentor who helps active gang members reassess their lives. Despite a legal case looming, Jordi is trying to turn his life around and step away from his checkered past. Where do you think you're at in terms of like your transition from roadman to a real man, so to speak? Uh, I'm a better man now. I don't do them things no more. I, just, I, think, I think definitely you come a long way. So I'm a bear man as now. That has happened. You're you're still I on that. I'm a, I'm a bear man now. I'm a civilian. I ain't doing none of that. Simple. And <laughs> have changed. So there are certain people that you can't have around you, and that's that's just the honest truth. The only person that's made a significant change in my life would probably be I think like Juro. Juro inspires change by helping gang members to get legitimate jobs and set up their own businesses. The reason why I stopped, I was thinking, Rod, do I want to get nicked again? Do I want to keep getting that? Like, I don't want to do this no more. I'm trying to be someone, I'm trying to be different. I want to be a different, I want to, I want to make an impact. I don't want to do a lot of things in life. But well, he will speak of what he hears and will tell you of things to come. He will give me glory because he will take what With these I new influences in his life, Geordie feels he's now on the right path as he knows that escaping gang yeah, life zero often boils down drop. to two choices. You need to choose zero frames drop, so it shouldn't be like... It's what you want to do, that's what I'm saying to you. It's not from my side. Joe, or oh, yo, dead in it. It, it <clears throat> is what it is, that's the road, that's, that's, that's what it is, that's what's going to happen. Despite his efforts to make a change, his lifestyle and choices eventually caught up with him as Geordie was sentenced and sent to prison for just over two and a half years. That's what I'm saying, man. If you're in that life, man, you got to have a way out. You can't think that life is going to support you till, you till you fucking decide to be 60 years old and retire from it. No, you're not going to make it to 60 doing that type of shit. Like, they're going to get you. For intent to supply Class A drugs. The reason why I don't regret it, li living that gang lifestyle, is because... I want to show people that it wasn't worth it. I survived it. And now this is my time to tell everyone, yo, this ain't worth it. I feel like I've got a message and a story to tell now to stop other people going in there. I can save so many lives from just my story. Geordie had the support to transition away from being in a gang but for the majority leaving the lifestyle behind, it's not as simple and straightforward. It's not that easy for everyone to say you can just get up and leave. You can't drop everyone you know, anywhere I go, everywhere I know somebody. And all that I constantly think of is, have I done something to that person? But nah, he didn't get splashed, he got, um, he got caught by like the police. Police jammed him. I've seen a few of my friends try leave this life or go do their music or whatever. Like, they think they're safe, two twos now, they come back to London, come back to wherever. And that's just it. They're just dead. In Brooklyn, despite the harrowing experience of having to sit through the trial of her son's murder, normal life has had to continue for Sharon. What are you coming? I think it's eight. All right. Sharon and others in the community are desperately trying to understand what can be done to stop the serious gang-inspired violence that is cutting these young lives short. I'm fretting about my grandkids. I do not want to get that phone call. <coughs> that, oh, comes quick, your grandson. I don't want that. And you're wondering who is next. I'm just wondering why is it so much weapon going into school? 
so there is no rules. It seems that the school them just let the kids ever everybody Two. just get on with what happening. So this is what happening now. It's too much open. The net is open, so the kids them do what they want to do. Something needs to be done. And it's like kids is growing on their own. The fear and frustration that mothers like Sharon feel stem from the acceptance and prevalence of knife use in the community. The gang is going on, but the system is not doing anything to Why? stop this. Come on, you know gang is here. You need to sit out here to see when the gang them come out in the daytime, summer, especially in the summertime, to see in areas where you know it's going on like that. You need to come out and to see where the route is and then try to pull it down. Where is the system? Where is the system? You got to stop this gang. It's sad, sad, sad. But teens are still being drawn into gangs, with the problem being that once they're in, many feel it's simply too difficult to get out. I could die any day now. Man, side note, man, like, hold on, nah, I'm gonna People finish this. People are on to you, Nah, hold on, look at this. Okay, hold on. This is, this is what, like, when y'all, Pat, like, when y'all in this shit, and something go wrong, like, this is, this is, I know probably some of y'all synced this already. Yes. Mr. Russell, my name is Tina Miller, and I work for the Gwinnett County Medical Examiner's Office. Medical Examiner? Is my son dead? Yes, I'm, yes, yes, no, my husband's here. Is my son dead? Babe, pull over right now, babe. Pull over, just pull over. Pull over right now. Pull over. Pull over, she said, medical examiner's, babe. She said, medical This is the phone call y'all get. This is the phone call you get. Is my son dead? Oh. So just imagine when y'all doing all that out there and this, this, and that, and when y'all life get took, that's what y'all parents go through. You would ask basically get insured. From back in the day, I've been on this road to now. Come on, because that mother's enough, man. Stop. I couldn't even get out of it. There was no point. If I had my chance to get out of it, I would have got out of it. Now, when you're young, it was always stuff like these type of nice or wrong kitchen, something like that. As you get to a For OG, awareness, you yeah. Then you grab a gun, car. If you're like a big man, you're only rather nice, though. Then what are you still doing on these roads? That's two deaths. You die and your parents die inside. Nobody wants to outlive their kids. Period. Cairo and vulnerable young boys like him are entangled in the lifestyle. I used to react to Their close the proximity to this dangerous world in turn creates doubts about exactly where they stand. Cairo, you're not in the gang. You might, you might call yourself something or you got a, you might you got a music group that's that's called something, but it's not a gang thing. Just got a lot of people that are friends. It's not a thing like we're going out causing trouble. It's a thing like with normal friendship, but then after you know police and everyone else will call it gangs because we're just young black boys in a group, man. What does it look like to you? Ain't got no backbone, no 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 no. Look at them <laughs> side man there. Cairo's music collective, PHSB, have assembled on the Woodpecker estate to film a new music video for the artist Wallace Dantes, featuring M.Dot. The video shoot settings for um, a new song. Not my song, but um, M.Dot, and he's in my group, so we're out here supporting him for his video shoot. Oh, Those yeah, R.I.P. Shoki. It's R.I.P. Yeah. PHSB. 
become a fireman. I'm a serious artist. You man producing bare garbage. Any income of the bros, I be halfing. Them man just running the toes, I be laughing. Them man at first, they're just starving. Though they are just teenagers, PHSB have an impressive following on social media. They are hoping success will get them out of their environment and challenge many stereotypes. That's how we bring the hood together. That's how we got everyone together. Like right, bringing something positive. It's either success gonna get you out the hood or haters gonna take you out. So. To the end. Even though some people might not think it's positive, something positive, man. Because we're not out there doing a madness. We're out there making music. Out of the hood, I got five ways. Tech girl higher than high grade. One time and I only go by what I say. Fry man, my definition of a Friday. Sad man, sad like shit. Sad man can't come to my bitch. Run it, run it, all sad and shit. You are part love, part in your pics. Wanna come par with the kids? Choosing to shoot a scene inside one of the blocks, they come face to face with the stereotyping that still condemns any gathering of young black boys as potential trouble. Okay, Karen, like, relax. They could, they're just shooting a music. <laughs> Kyra and Myron are used to being insulted in this way when seen together with their friends. She was just probably on a bad day or something. I don't know, man, but it's because some people in the block here, yeah, when they see all of us in a the block, they don't like it because that's where they live in it. Everyone has their mouth to talk in it, so they're free to talk where they want to talk. But we know what we know and we're going to go as far as we want to go. Mm, we'll probably go further than her in there. She was oh, terrified. She was, rock, man. she was terrified. She walked. Hold on, go back. It's a long way back. Oh, cool. Money, bro. You do this man right there. She said, "Put rap, put rap." Didn't they even say like, "Hey," like they even said, "Hey." You do this man right there. She said, "Put rap." See, look, he tried to say, "Hey," like, "Put rap." <laughs> she made an immediate right. Said, "Hood rats." She bold, cause if they was really hood rats, they would have been on her ass. Oh my God. It's because some people in the block here, yeah, when they see all of us in the block, they don't like it because that's where they live in it. Everyone has their mouth to talk in it, so they're free to talk where they want to talk. But we know what we know, and we're going to go as far as we want to go. Mm, we'll probably go further than her in there, man. Oh, man. She's mm -hmm. living in the block, man. We're trying to get out of the block. She's still in the block. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We're trying to get out of the block. No way. Yeah, running famous. That makes me feel good, in it? Like, we're doing something good. So, yeah. We just need to keep on doing it. One day we'll be there. One day we'll get everyone out of the hood. That's all it is, man. Consistency and, like, you know, keeping a low-ass profile, low-key. Because, hey, man, you, you're doing music. You're going to get known that somebody going to be hating. Somebody going to hate. So you got to keep a low profile and stay consistent. One day we're going to do it, man. The boys are in good spirits. But just a day earlier, things were very different for Cairo and his friends. Me on my way to video shoot the doggy them. It was the first day of filming for the music video. The shoot was in Catford, also in the borough of Lewisham, and an area they know has dangerous gangs. I'm young and I go with my friends, I'll go over there because I know that if there's a chance of anything happening, I got my friends there to back me up and Ah, that's a bogus way to think, man. If your friends will leave you just as fast as you, you can count to three, man. Yeah, I hear it in the songs. Why'd you leave your bro? Like, niggas will run on your ass. Don't think because you with your homies, you safe. You got to keep yourself safe. Like Baby said, I always got my shit on me. So I'm never... <laughs> So I'm never nervous. Get it's not because we're a gang or we're take care of it going myself, out of God trouble. Damn it. It's just because we know something might happen and we just want to be able to protect ourselves in anything that happens. His mother, Shireen, suspects the lengths Cairo and his friends will go to protect one another. Cairo has carried knives. He carried knives on numerous occasions. He's that one was fearing for his knife. He hasn't told he didn't have told me fearing for his life, but obviously, why are you carrying the knife for? But she is accepting of the harsh reality that Cairo's life is regularly in danger, and that in his world, 
different rules apply. I'm not one of those parents that are, no, not my son, not my child, we never do that, no. Because really, truly, when he is outside, yeah, they can get up to anything that you don't know. They can hide things from you. Be all nice when they come home. Yes, mom, did it, mom. And then you're out on the road and your son gone, man. She's speaking real, real facts. That's a mom who is not oblivious to what the hell is going on out here. The video shoot is in a multi-story car. Like, if you have that attitude as a parent, like, you, you can do more to keep your kid out of trouble. Like, if you just want to ignore the facts that it's a possibility, then, hey, well, you can't do nothing for your kid. I'll park in the town center. As Cairo and his friends look on, everything is running smoothly. But something soon. Look at the cameraman. The cameraman seen him pull up like, oh man, look, man, listen. That ain't what I'm on. I'm just here to shoot the video, man. Damn. Damn. But something soon has them sensing danger. A couple of youths, right? Huh? Now a couple of youths. Well, they're circling, innit? The boys are circling where we were filming. And we kept on seeing them circling and felt like they, were, they kept on seeing them, like someone was plotting on us. No, there's some youths that are circling, they're standing there. The group get more nervous as people disappear into the shadows and then reappear. They're still standing there, but they're just standing around there. If I saw them, one team standing right here. Something was happening, so we kept on going out to check. And like in the middle of a video, we kept on moving about, moving where because we didn't know what these boys were planning because we could see them just circling. And true, we know that certain boys don't like us. We just know that we have to always keep on point, always be wary of our surroundings. Look, 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 look. It's getting intense. Yeah, something about to go down, was The boys were fearful that they were being set up to be attacked by a local gang. See, they're still standing there. They're still standing there. With Cairo and his friends seemingly trapped, the situation takes a dramatic turn. Yeah, no, you got the flicky. Fam, I will mash work with that flicky, you know. So wait, they boys had a flicky or the dudes that were circling the block had a flicky? The situation takes a dramatic turn. Yeah, no, you got the flicky. Fam, I will mash work with that flicky, you know. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. In Catford, Cairo and friends fear that they were being set up to be attacked by a gang watching them at their video shoot. They're still standing there. Feeling under threat, a flick knife was quickly produced. Yeah, now you got a flicky. Fam, I will mash. They're asking a lot of questions. <laughs> Work with that flicky, you know. But you know, educational purposes. Eventually, the boys looking on back off and Cairo and his friends finally relax. But Cairo's readiness to use a knife after his pre- Hey, hey, honestly, a knife? YouTube, I'm not saying nothing to condone this, I'm just, just educational purposes. All you need is two inches of a knife to do any type of damage, you good. His convictions for carrying one is a worrying sign. Even though he was compelled by fear and danger, it was one bad choice too many. Four months after the music video incident, Cairo is arrested for a third time for possession of an offensive weapon. In March 2016, he is sentenced to six months in youth custody. Dang. This is the first time Cairo has been sent to jail. 
but his journey to prison was insignificant compared to what was about to happen to his close friend Myron just six weeks later. Two boys aged 15 and 16 are being questioned by detectives investigating the fatal stabbing of a 17-year-old during a fight in New Cross. He's been named by friends as aspiring rapper Myron Yade, known as MDOT. Damn, this is what in it happened. In a too familiar tale following an altercation with a group of boys, Myron was stabbed whilst on Camplin Street, New Cross. One fatal blow was all it took to end his young life. I'm telling you, all you need is two inches. Yeah, R.I.P. On the Woodpecker Estate, a community once again gathers to remember and celebrate a young life lost. Hold up to somebody's hand right now. Grab something. Hold up to somebody's hand. Just stick As a talented artist, Myron attended a performing arts college, a world away from knives, guns, and gangs. This one nigga's dropping off? Magnums? I know a homeless person came through and drank them. Positive. But this inescapable culture in his environment was the root cause of his death. This culture man, makes leave that man alone, man. to use knives to settle the most minor of quarrels. Myron's friends are still struggling to come to terms with his senseless killing. Hello. How are you feeling about the whole Myron situation? That, as a whole, the whole thing? Even worse when you when your when your man's loses life and you in behind bars, you can't do nothing about it. In the wake of Myron's death, conflicting voices in the community highlight the difficult choices that these young people have to make. There's like M Dot's family that want justice and things like that. And then there's the oldest telling us, yeah, you got to do this, you got to do that. It's the environment, innit? Like, if we're going to start, if we're coming, we're going to come back to the hood every day, we're going to come back to the girl every day, we're going to hear the oldest and like, tell us, what, you man ain't done nothing. Go do this, go do that. And we're going to go on the roads and then there's going to be parents like, rah, like, don't go out there, don't do the same, cherish this, like, it's too much messages through our head, like, it's too much to do. Myron's friends can see how his murder is affecting the community and they fear for the future. Everyone's scared, I swear everyone's scared. People are just not thinking and that, that. When one person dies, Damn. everyone from that. People are just not thinking. I repeat to that man too, man. And that, that. that. When one person dies, everyone from that side thinks it's time for retaliation. They're going to retaliate. You're going to hear someone from them sides die. You understand? Hey, yeah, That's how just bodies keep on getting dropped. She's going to look just like her too. It's just going to keep on. I didn't even say it's going to get worse. The cost of gang culture is not just being felt in terms of lives lost, but also families being shattered. After seven months and three attempts to convict those accused of killing her son, Sharon has been given the news she has been hoping to avoid. What? The liaison officer called me and said to me that the CPS was saying that I cannot go for another trial. They think we don't need a third trial because the jury failed twice to reach the verdict. Damn. No, I can't live with it. I can't live with it. 
these two boys supposed to be just walk through the door just like that and my child life is gone from the start to the end it's on the cctv straight don't worry shorty like this is the real reality of it this little boy can go one of two ways he could be plotting to get back in the century or he could be going the lawyer way to go to fix the judicial system man an eyewitness was there who saw them and the jury failed twice to reach the verdict. That's and that, the that judicial man, I'm telling you, man. team also fails. Where is the justice? Is that the law? Is that the rule? I am here and I will fight for my son. I need justice. Justice, it has to happen for my son, for Shaquan. It's a massive blow to a mother exactly. seeking a sense of meaning in the tragic loss of a child. But her resolve is unwavering. That's also sad. Justice has been done, but she wants a better outcome. All of the problem, it's about gang. What is that talking talks. about? You understand? So it will continue if it doesn't have a solution. It have to have a stop. Because if you have kids, you will never want your kids to die in vain just like that come on enough is enough i swear everyone's scared god forbid but who's he gonna take next that's that's just what i think like Facts. it's like we're losing everyone that was close to us r.i.p damn they gonna zoom in okay lad August 5th, 2016, 11 months after Shaquan and four months after Myron was stabbed and killed. Lorenzo Choki was stabbed to death. Man. Mm -hmm. Not even a lie, that was one of the better uh, documentaries that I've watched, man. TLO. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your uh, post notification bells. We still on Twitch, man. It's Documentary Monday, man. Come join us if you got time. If not, you know. <coughs> Damn, bless you. I mean, excuse me. <laughs>